Okay, I hope you had a good spring break. Did everyone have a good spring break? You had a whole week to sleep, so everyone's wide awake, right? Yes, uh, work fine. All right, well, hey, headphones, please, because I want you to hear what I'm saying. Please, please, please. All right, headphones, please. Now, uh, real quick, let me, uh, let me put on my coaching hat. It's like, Nothing. All right. We're in the fourth quarter. It's the fourth nine weeks. We're down by ten. The only way we're going to win is if we hit our head in the game. Do our best every day. Now, how many other seniors? All right. You can still fail and not graduate in this nine weeks. It is not over. Don't get the itis. Senior itis. Senior itis. Okay. Yes, I know some of y'all just want to, you think you can just like coast to the end, but you actually have to do work for nine more weeks-ish, okay? Gonna, I'm going to do my best to make it as easy as I can, okay, but you got to do your work, okay? If you're not a senior, I'd like you to be a senior one day, so make sure you pass my class, okay? Now, that's the bare minimum. A lot of us are content with the bare minimum. We should be shooting for A's and B's. So again, please do your best and for sure have a plan to pass semester last year. Now, we, I've, I've said this before the break, okay, by the way, coaching hats off now. All right, but we already did 8-1 and 8-2, and that was part of the last nine weeks, but I told you 8-3 and 8-4 is going to roll into fourth nine weeks, so if you have not done these yet, that's, you already got two missing assignments right. this nine weeks, right? So I understand if you were like really working hard to pass and stuff happens, but now it's, the reckoning is here. I'm going to, tomorrow, print you out a little grade sheet and let you know if you've done these, okay? But you probably already know, right? Make sure you do those, because guess what's happening this Friday? Quick turnaround. There's already a test. It's because we're already mostly done with this unit, okay? So I know it's weird to start the nine weeks kind of with the test, but it's because we ran out of time to finish unit eight before the break, so I got to push it after the break. That's kind of how it works, okay? So... The only thing we have to do this week, I got one note, it's kind of bless you, short, kind of simple in my opinion, and then we'll have plenty of time to work on assignments, review, test Friday. That's the plan, okay? So again, it's the fourth nine weeks, finish strong emoji, right? That's our plan. Cool? If you did not pass, or if you have specific goals that you need to accomplish, I will be reminding you this week, okay? So please make sure that Please make sure that you pass my class. So I don't have to wear this hat. All right? Yeah! <laughs> All right. No, what is it? What are you, Adam Samuel? I am. I will not say that. That's very <laughs> vulgar and inappropriate. But I will say, keep on rolling, baby. All right. All right, let's do some notes here. Now, let me pass this out. Actually, let's not do the notes, and let's do the warm-up first, right? Ha, 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 that was funny. Now, first things first. Let's try to remember, after we've forgiven things for a week, how to do this. The only way you can add fractions is if what is the thing? The bottom. Yeah, the bottom, which is called the denominator. So look, the denominators we have, 3x, 9, and 9x. They're not the exact same, but we need to get a least common denominator, LCD. What do you think the least common denominator of 3x, 9, and 9x is? I heard 9, which is close, but if there's x's involved, we have to have an x. So, what do you think? You said 9. Then you said x. 9x. Too much space between those. All right, but 9x is correct. Okay. Now, check it out. Here's why 9x is correct. Do you see how there's an x involved in both of them? So you've got to have an x. And look at the numbers. 3, 9, and 9, they all go into the number 9. Right? 9 goes into itself. 3 goes into 9. Okay, That's the least common multiple. So let's go and write that off to the side here. My LCD, my least common denominator, is 9x. LC, LCD. 9x 
So let's think about this. What do I need to multiply this first one by to get 9x? 3x times 3 will give me 9x, right? So I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. Let's go ahead and do this. No. On the top, it'll just be 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the next one is a 9. If I want it to be 9x, what am I going to have to multiply it by? X. Does everyone see that if I want 9x, I have to have an x here, so I need to multiply by x? Okay, so go ahead and put times x on the bottom and the top. Okay, on the right side, it's already 9x, so I don't have to mess with that. Right? Now, all I got to do, well, now I want to simplify this, so let's do the math here. The first fraction, 3 times 5. Fifteen. Okay, and then the bottom three times three x we should get nine x. Yas, yas or nas. Okay. On the next one, two times x. Two x. Two x. Right. And then nine times x. We need nine x in the bottom, so that works out. And then the last one stays the same because it's already nine x. So now, does everyone see, each fraction has the same denominator on the bottom, 9x, 9x, 9x. What was our special step right here when the bottoms are all the same? Okay, cross them out. Everybody, this was on our notes. Hear me say it now if you didn't learn this. If the bottoms are all the same, which is what we did on purpose, you can scratch them out, and now the only thing that remains is the top. So watch this, big old scratch. Scratch. So I'm just left with 15 plus 2x equals 47. This is a two-step equation. Can you solve this two-step equation? If I'm solving for x, what do I get rid of first, the 15 or the 2? The loner 15, yes. How do I get rid of that positive 15? Yeah, minus 15 on both sides, so minus 15 minus 15. What's 47 minus 15? Is it? And then 2x is being multiplied. How do I get rid of that 2? Divide by 2. And just like March Madness, 32 divided by 2 is a sweet 16. I guess that's a college sports joke, but whatever. All right. X is 16. Look at that. Now, what I was alluding to earlier, let's talk about these notes. Not that long, so bear with me. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 You gotta go because it's friend, my only best friend. I said Olivia. Right? Your favorite teacher ever. Right? And your favorite, don't forget your favorite coach too. Yes. I did it all four to five. All right, let's talk about this. There is nowhere to write this down specifically, but there's plenty of space to write. So everybody, on your notes, can you write this definition down? You can either write it like up here in this space or down here in this space, doesn't matter where. But go ahead and write this definition down in that equation, anywhere, okay? Maybe not right underneath example one because you're gonna do example one there, okay? So you can do it here or do down bottom left, either way, or down the third Everyone got notes? Okay. What is this? Vegetables? Okay. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, where are you? Oh, okay. Oh my gosh.
gosh, I only said like 10 million times. You can write it somewhere, like in this blank space up here, or the blank space at the bottom left. So a inverse variation is a relationship between two variables in which the product is a constant. Okay, so bam. You might remember Algebra 1 where you did direct variation where you multiplied times x, but this is inverse variation, which is dividing by x. And k is a constant. Constant k. Does everyone have that written down? Three, two, one, go. All right, example one. Y'all ready? Here we go. Let's read. That's half the problem with us. We don't read things, right? Example one, formulate and solve an inverse variation word problem. Okay, here we go. Ready? The number of revolutions made by a tire traveling over a fixed distance, so a tire going like this, varies inversely. Let's go ahead and underline that. How do I know this is inverse variation? It says the words inverses, sorry, inversely, it has varies. Inverse variation, okay? Now, what are the two things that are inversely varying, okay? So let's read it again. The number of revolutions, that's my first thing. Let's underline number of revolutions. Varies inversely with what? Read, what does it say? Varies inversely with what? What? Radius. Is everyone reading this and seeing this? Okay. Number of revolutions varies inversely with the radius, right? Uh, underline that. These are your two uh, values. These are your two variables, you could say. Uh, these are the two things we're talking about in this word problem. Okay. So. Now we get some numbers, ready? It says a 12 inch radius tire makes 100 revolutions. Okay? So those two things that go together are gonna multiply together, okay? And they travel a certain distance. It says how many revolutions? So when it says how many, do we know how many? It's asking us. So when you see how many, you could think of putting an X there. This is X revolution. So this one was 12 and 100. The next one is x and 16. How many x revolutions would a 16-inch radius tire require to travel the same distance? So the distances are going to match. Okay, they're the same. Let's make an equation. Okay, so again, the beginning of the second sentence says 12-inch radius gives you 100 revolutions. So when I write this equation, 12 inch times 100 revolution. Write that down. Right? So on example one, we're setting up our equation. We know these two things go together. So we multiply them together. Equals. But on this one, the inches are 16, but the revolutions, that was the how many. That's missing. That's an X revolution. I want you to notice that X is red, that, that means it's missing, okay? It's not X red, okay? It's how many revolutions? Okay, so here's my question. If I'm solving for this X, how do I get rid of this 16 that's being multiplied next to it? X is being multiplied by 16, how do I get rid of that 16? Divide, okay, very good. So on each side, divide by 16. The 16s cancel out. And then this left side, now all I got to do is multiply these two and divide by 16. So 12 times 100 divided by 16. And you could tap that in one step or do it part by part. But when you do 12 times 100 and then divide it by 16, you get 75 
And that answer is in revolutions. So 75 revolutions of a 16 inch radius tire will go the same distance as a 12 inch tire going 100 revolutions. Cool. Now, if you get problems like that, you could set it up the exact same way. You got one thing missing, you set up two things being multiplied like next to each other, divide. This one's not that complicated. The, the next one on the back, it's not, it's not, not really, it's not that bad, to be honest. But, so flip it over. It's, it's just got part. It's not that hard, I'll be honest. Okay. All right, is everyone example two? Flip it over, please. It says, formulate and solve a rational function that models a real-world situation. Here we go. Some seniors don't have to drive it. So, some seniors plan on throwing a party to celebrate the graduation. They plan on renting a large water slide room bounce out of a party. Bouncy houses rent their largest water slide for 500 bucks. Okay? So, the largest one. $500 bouncy slide. The rental fee is going to be split equally amongst every person that attends the party. Okay. The senior class has a total of 600 students. Now you might guess not everyone's going to go to the bouncy slide house party, whatever thing. Okay. But let's answer these questions. Formulate an equation that models the situation. Let x represent the number of seniors that attend the party, and y represent the cost per person. Now this goes back to the, the front side with that equation. We're going to use the equa equation y equals k divided by x. Okay? So y is the cost per person. x is the number of seniors. What do I do with 500 to find the cost per person? 500 divided by, well, however many students. Well, that's if everyone shows up. Since we don't know who's showing up, we call it x, the number of seniors that are going to actually show up. So your y is going to equal... 500 divided by x. Does that make sense? Right now, we don't know who's actually showing up, x. We don't know why, the total number of the cost, right? All of y'all and me. All right, yeah, now. That's a, that's a term for you. Wow. All right, now, let's do letter B. I was about to say number B. Letter B. Uh, what is the cost per person if... 100 people show up. So where, do, where am I going to put the 100? And the Y or the X? Well, let's remember, X is the number of seniors and Y is the cost. So if it's 100 seniors, that's X. <laughs> X represents the number of seniors. So you're going to throw 100 in for X on the bottom of that fraction. Cool? So 500 divided by... 100 seniors. How much will that cost per person? 500 divided by 100 is what? All right. I know there's a lot more people than one in this class. Is everyone with me? 500 divided by 100 is five bucks. Cool. Not too bad. What if it says every senior attends? How? No. 600 students will go instead of the 100 on the bottom. It's going to be 600 now. So you plug in 600 in for X. You got 500 over 600. No, yeah, I think you have it upside down, backwards. Oh, 500 over 600 cents. should give you 83 cents. So that's even cheaper. Very cheap. Cool. So no matter what they give you for the number of seniors, you plug that in for the X on the bottom. Cool. Cheaper it is. Yeah, that's how it works. Right. But what about this? This is a little bit different. Check it out. This is backward now. Okay. This says. How many seniors? Look, X is missing. I don't know X. I don't know how many seniors. But I do know the cost per person, which is Y, is 2. So 2 does not go down here at the bottom where X was. 2 goes over here where Y is on the left side. 
Okay? Because again, why is the cost per person? Two dollars is the cost per person. See how these things match up? Okay, so when I put my equation, the two okay, equals five hundred over x. Now, how do you think we can solve this? Multiply what? No. Okay, check this out. Two is a whole number. Whole numbers can be over. What? A whole number is always over what number? One. Does everyone know that? Like two is two over one. Okay. Now, if you have two fractions equal to each other, can't you cross multiply and divide this? You could. Y'all, yes, yes, you could. Okay. okay. So two times x, 500 times one is 500, and then you could divide by two, right? Yeah, you said multiply, though. It's not multiply, it's divide. So, you get 250. Now, let me give you another shortcut. What we, cross multiply and divide is two steps. Let me tell you one uh, shortcut trick. You could just switch the x and the 2 when it's in this situation. Okay? Two steps. Okay. Please be careful when you're solving those, okay? Now, on your assignment, you have a lot. You got six of them, like example one. And on the back, you got two of them, like example two. They're not really that bad. Like I said earlier, it's very important that you've done 8 3 and 8 4. But since this should be fresh on your mind, I'd like for you to finish 8 5 first. In the coming days, wrap up 8 3 and 8 4. Maybe even consider did I do 8 1 and 8 2 from last nine weeks? Okay. Because we have that test Friday and we want to start off on the right foot because we do not have senioritis and we're not slacking and we're not going to do the wrong thing. We're going to finish strong. Well, I'm going to put on my hat again. All right? Okay, I'm going to pass this out. We're going to get started, right?